People who think they've met a real psychopath, what were they like? My dad was a psychopath. He used to beat us all of the time. Mom finally got a divorce when I was four, but things got much worse for me. My older brother was a psychopath too, and he was a real monster. Over the years I was put into the hospital for third-degree burns, ER surgery for internal bleeding, a broken nose, and several stitches. My school ended up calling the state on my mom, and there was an investigation. My brother ended up being committed for three months. To give you an idea of how evil the bastard was, picture laying down on the grass when you look over and see someone coming at you full speed on their bike. There's no time to move as the bike goes over your face. I vividly remember his evil smile and look of pleasure as he looked down at me. Whoa. This is insane. How are you now? How's your mom? Did your brother get help or did it escalate? One of my cousins' kids scares me sometimes. She doesn't cry when she laughs, it's in the wrong places. I think this creeps me out more than anything, she seems to like hurting people physically and she steals all the time. Her mother gives her little affection and she's one of six children. Can relate to this. My cousin is 11 and is one of four children that don't get too much attention. He has told people that his action figures said to strangle them with a shoelace. He suffers from multiple mental disorders and epilepsy. The rest of the family have agreed since he was pretty young that he matches what we've heard are the beginning traits of serial killers. Edit, I didn't mean to insinuate that epilepsy contributes to any kind of mental issues. Just trying to get the point across that he suffers from multiple medical issues. No offense intended to anyone who has to deal with this horrible condition. I've met a 19-year-old guy who was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder and very proud of it. He had a lot of funny things to say and actually seemed pretty nice and normal, keep in mind this was in the psych ward so normal is all relative, but once in a while he would say something that just sounded off. He was confused why other patients were missing their children and SOs for one thing. He liked his daughter and his girlfriend but didn't have the kind of attachment where he would miss them when they were gone. At one point he found out that his daughter had hurt her head, and he got really upset, saying he didn't want a retarded baby. It was like he was more worried about how it would make him look than how his daughter was feeling. I do think he cared about his family, but the way he talked about them seemed more like how someone would talk about possessions they're proud of, not like actual people. I knew one very closely for about a year. He was actually a good sociopath in a sense. He was trying to be normal as best he understood it. But he did not really know how. He had lived an amazing life. Traveling everywhere and stuff. But it was like his next challenge was to simply get married and be a normal person. And have friends and stuff like that. He had a lot of trouble with truth. When talking about things he would always twist things, so they suited whatever shory he was trying to tell. But even when it served no purpose he would still make things up. It was like he had no instinctive ability to simply state things as he saw them. He had to kind of concentrate and focus a little bit to even remember the truth, or at least to say the truth. His communication was always about making sure you believed him, or at least agreed with him. He never just said something. It was always, say something, and then check your reaction to it to make sure you believed it. All this was done quite subtly, and unless you looked at the pattern, you would not realize it. He had very few long-term friends. But lots of short-term friends. If you were hanging out with him he seemed very social. But if you chatted to them and asked them how long have you known him the answer was usually a week or a month or maybe six months. His long-term friends were all very weak-minded. Women loved him. He was decent looking. Probably an eight. But he picked up women effortlessly. He would meet girls just walking down the street and sleep with them a few minutes later. He could go out to a bar and get laid that night every time. He told me has slept with about 900 women, he's mid-30s, and based on what I saw of the rate he sleeps with women I believe him. 
I'd often get to know the girls he was with so I knew what was happening. He would sleep with lots of girls but only dated higher quality women. And the girls he dated would often fall strongly in love with him. It was almost comical how often it happened. And these were not dumb bimbos like Barney preferred from Highwim. He dated attractive, intelligent, talented, capable women. Executives. Business owners. Women like that. Most followed the same story and fell for him really hard. As I said he was trying to be a good guy so he was now callous or cruel with them. But he did a lot of dating and a lot of casual sex. He probably had three or four women practically in love with him at any one time. And it was not him even manipulating them really. The more himself he was. The more openly sociopathic. The more they liked him. Really made me see women's attraction to men very differently. He was a very self-aware sociopath. Most sociopaths when they realize they are different, a lot never do. They are not good at introspection, come to the conclusion they are a superior type of human being. Their lack of empathy makes them more capable, in their eyes. This guy did not think like that. He was aware something was missing. Once or twice he made allusions to being empty inside. Like life was just a long boring video game, and he was doing stuff to keep occupied until he died. I think he could sense other people were feeling things that he could not. And he was attempting to copy that by mimicking their behavior, but it was not working. It made me realize that describing sociopaths as lacking empathy misses the point. It's not they cannot feel empathy for other people. It's that they can hardly feel at all. They cannot feel empathy for another person's pain or loss. Or their sense of violation because they don't feel those things for themselves either. They only feel a very small set of emotions. The vast majority of human emotions are completely inaccessible to them. Smart. Charming. Let me go back. Smart. Like what well, kind of smart? No social filter, not like people who claim to have Asperger's, but in a way that you would usually laugh along with him at someone else's expense or nervously chuckle and change the subject. From the girl's point of view, he was often the subject of conversation since he was somewhat charismatic and magnetic, they said he was a 7-ish but something about him, made him a 9. Talked quite a bit but never about himself, although you never really noticed that until later. Unsettling, but you didn't realize it until later. Can't say I miss hanging out, but I wonder what he is up to. I really liked the way you wrote this. It really delivered the message in a unique way. He was 16 and worked in the kitchen. I thought he was 20, 21. He brought beer to work and quietly went through a six-pack a shift. Had total lack of effect, never joked, never smiled. He was real quiet, never talked about family, school, friends, girlfriends, partying, hobbies, sports, nothing. He had some weird friends I'd see come to the back door at work, lots of secret whispered conversations. After six months he quit, and I'd see him around, but avoided him. He made the headlines a few years later when he was murdered. Seems he'd killed 12 or 13 people in a two or three year space. He brought beer to work and quietly went through a six-pack a shift. Had total lack of effect, never joked, never smiled. He was real quiet, never talked about family, school, friends, girlfriends, partying, hobbies, sports, nothing. This part had me imagining Matthew Mauavera dispelled from season one of True Detective. I went to middle school with a demon. He had that blank stare, but you knew something was off look constantly. He would goad people into attacking him, beating the shit out of them, and landing a suspension, instead of expulsion because it was technically self-defense. I once watched him beat up a guy with glasses, first punch broke the glasses, and he got a piece of glass, or metal not really sure, in his hand and continued punching the other kid, lacerating his face. It was a bloody mess, my friends and I still about it. Thought maybe he just was violent, I made friends with him as a safety measure. Some kid messed with me in gym class, this guy broke the bully's collarbone in a wrestling accident. The last day I saw him we were running down the hall about to go down steps, 
and he kicked the leg out from under a girl with MS, watched her fall down the steps, and stood over her laughing. Fortunately a teacher saw it, and he was removed from school. I felt horrible and luckily she was as okay as one can be. I've looked him up online and a few misdemeanors, but nothing serious in this state. I worked as a parole officer for a while and had an offender that I would classify as a sexually deviant psychopath. The first crime he was arrested for was kidnapping, rape, and assault of his female cousin. He and another offender brutally raped her at gunpoint in his vehicle and then threw her out of the vehicle completely naked and left her to have to walk to find help. While in jail he raped a male cellmate and was put in solitary. He was convicted of all charges except the rape. During his time in prison he raped again. While he was released to parole he was arrested and charged with the rape of his sister and a child, these charges haven't gone to trial yet. His crimes were absolutely horrific, but even more terrifying was just how seemingly nice he was. I've known many friends who knew him in school or from work, and they all talk about how he always seemed so sweet and caring. He knows how to manipulate people and come across as some normal dude.